Welcome back to the Bluegrass State. It's an awesome spring day. And when I say it's a spring day, it's kind of one of those spring days where the temperature is creeping up on us a little bit at a time. You might notice that uh, my pup here is wet. Well, the reason he's wet is because he's been in and out of our little doggy pool all morning. And uh, you might say, well, Stoney, that seems pretty normal for a lab. Uh, of course it does. He loves going in the water. But uh, today he's been in, in and out of the water a whole lot more. Wait, and the reason that he's been in and out of the water, let's go, is because uh, this is the first day that the temperature has uh, been over 80 degrees. Okay, so like when uh, we were working dogs this morning, wait, Eli was saying, you know, gosh, these dogs seem a little bit lethargic today. They were so energetic yesterday. Same group of dogs. Nobody came in or left yesterday. So the dynamic, you know, seems like would be the same. And I just pointed over there to the thermometer and I said, look at the thermometer. It's getting a little bit warmer. Wait a little bit earlier okay so that's something for you guys to think about you know you'll get out in the springtime and that's tall dog training weather you'll be having a good time you know and uh, some days you'll start to work in your dog and the weather seems you know it seems about the same as yesterday to you but what you have to realize is uh, for a dog slight changes in temperature in the springtime translate to big changes in uh, their fatigue level they get real fatigued uh, as the as the temperature kind of creeps up and so I thought since that was a good little lesson for Eli, that's a good little lesson for you guys. As the spring progresses, okay, you got to kind of change up your dog training schedule. You're going to have to do some more training early in the morning and some more training late in the afternoon. And then your general uh, uh, set and rep schedule is going to have to be different, right? So you might have more sessions per day, but those sessions are made up of less repetitions per uh, activity, right? Okay, so like right there, we just walked around the course real quick just to kind of get warmed up for what we're doing. And uh, <laughs> you saw Mr. No Name, he just kind of, he kind of hung out with me and, and said, well, Stoney, that's cool. I don't mind doing that. Hup, hup. Get up here. But, uh, you know, he didn't seem super excited about it. Well, that's because it's almost lunch and the sun is directly overhead and he's kind of getting hot. And <laughs> why wouldn't surprise, wouldn't surprise me a bit if he runs over there and jumps in that pool again. Uh, we should have made this video a little bit earlier this morning, but we just had people coming and going and so we couldn't. All right, so how's our sessions go with a five month old dog? We come out and just real quick, we kind of grease the groove, right? By walking around, making sure they know their common vocabulary. We work on come a little bit, let's go. Hup, easy, wait and stay. We make sure their physical skills are in place. And uh, you know, from the last video, I've been really working on developing this dog's retrieving drive, which he was born with a lot of retrieving diet drive. I'm just trying to refine it, okay? And then uh, in the last video, I introduced this retrieving item to it. It's just a, it's just a barbell. So we have kind of fun things to fetch and then things that aren't so fun. This is one of those things that aren't so fun. And so this is what we use to teach the dog that just sometimes I need them to pick something up and hand it to me or hold it in their mouth, regardless of it, whether or not that seems like it's a super good idea at that time, right? Okay, so what we're working on this month with them is getting them to take this and hold it, okay? Now, so I give it to him, he's supposed to take it, and then he holds it for a while, then I've got a count going on in my brain, and after he's held it for the requisite amount of time, then I tell him, hey, I really appreciate that. And I'm not, I'm not really wearing this out, guys. I'm getting three to five reps, and in this, uh, in this weather today where we've creeped over 80 and the sun is kind of glaring down at us here, I might only go for two reps, okay? And that's just the general rule, guys. The hotter it gets, the less reps you go for, okay? And if you don't understand why, listen, here's a simple thing for you. Go in your house and get your winter coat and your long johns on, and then wear those the next time you're working your dog. Okay, because that's kind of how that dog feels. That dog's in a fur coat and dogs can't sweat like you can sweat. So they get hot really fast. So don't be out there fuss. I've seen a million people in the middle of the summertime fuss at their dogs for not giving enough effort or not trying hard enough. Hey, go put your long johns on, go put your goose down on, and then you go out there whenever you're training your dog and you hold yourself to the same standard. You know what I'm about here? I'm about modeling the behavior. So I'm not gonna ask the dog to do something like if I wouldn't be willing to do it under the same circumstances. Here. Fetch that up for me. Very nice. So I've got a count in my mind. And look, he's getting pretty good at that. So I say, hey, I appreciate it. Oh, it's a very good dog. Now, once I kind of get him to where, hey, pig, do you mind? Do you mind? Now, once I kind of get him to where I can hand it to him and they can hold it, that's pretty cool, right? But now, uh, 
I don't need them just I don't need to just be handing the dog stuff I need them to go get stuff and bring it to me and hold it until I can take it in my hand so I'm gonna take this item and I'm gonna put it over here on the ground a little bit if he allow back up right and then I'm gonna ask the dog to go over there and get it for me so I'm gonna tell him to kind of stay there on that line tamer stand and I'm gonna put that down there and then I'm just gonna ask him hey fetch that up for me he's gonna go over there and get it now I'm gonna back up this way to the line tamer stand good this way he ends up nice and straight in front of me. I still got a number in my mind where he has to hold it and that's really good. Good. Now, the reason we're doing this, this dog here, if I throw this or a rock or a stick or anything, he'll fetch it because the throwing it makes him really excited, okay? But like uh, uh, just going and getting something I told him to go get, that doesn't always seem like a great idea, especially if it's hot or if he's fatigued or tired or whatever. So having the dog hold something's cool and having them go get it and bring it back to me is cool. But one of the things I really need to do is I need to make sure that this dog develops work ethic as it relates to retrieving. So I need him to be able to walk and hold this for progressively longer distances. Okay, so this is a simple exercise. Watch, I'm going to ask him to stay here. I'm going to... Uh, uh, place my retrieving item. Wait. Now they'll mess up some, so don't fuss at them. But I'm going to place my retrieving item over here. Then I'm going to ask him to fetch it up, and then I'm going to move. Now the what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to move 10 steps. I'm going to try to get him to carry it 10 steps today. And I'm going to try to get three to five reps. And I'm just going to read them based on the sun, based on the conditions, based on how much he's paying attention to the pig, whatever. So there's my retrieving item. Fetch it up. Now watch. I'm going to go back 10 steps. One, two, three, four five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ask him to bring it here, hand it to me, tell him I appreciate it, make over him. Oh, you're such a smarty. Oh, you're a very smart dog. Okay, now uh, I will do that backwards so that you guys can see it from another angle. Come here. So I'm asking him to get over here and kind of sit right about there. Stay there. Then I'm going to place his retrieving item over here just a little ways away from him. Then I'm going to ask him to go get it. Hey, fetch it up. Then when he gets it, I'm going to get a little bit excited. Oh, good boy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Ask him to sit there and hold it. He gives it to me. I say, hey, I appreciate it. Uh, let's go out here in the grass, Eli, so you can get a little better sideways angle on that. Good boy. Okay, we'll get you a nice little sideways angle. Stay. It's getting hot, so can't uh, take my fetching item very far. Oh, fetch it up, dude. Oh, it's a good dog. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And he holds it perfectly. Say, I appreciate it. Oh, my gosh, it's a very nice dog. Now we'll go up here and uh, do something uh, more fun. Good. Now, speaking of fun, watch this, guys. Psh, 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 psh. Oh, look how much more fun the dog thinks it is when you're just throwing it for him. Okay. <laughs> oh, what a good dog. So, like, you know, don't negate to the, the, don't forget to have a good time. Oh, my gosh. And just let them chase it sometimes, you know, just for fun. Oh, my gosh. Oh, it's a very good dog. Very nice dog. Oh, you're smart. Okay, let's go. All right, this little guy was hot, so he went and jumped in the pool again. But now he's ready to get back to work, I think. Come on. Up, up, up. And you'll hear me say that over and over and over again. This channel is full of, of uh, me talking about put the work in, get back to work. Okay, and what I mean by that is I'm talking long term. I mean every day, like get up and move towards your ultimate goals, right? So what's my ultimate goals with this dog? I want him to come, to be still, to have good manners, and to fetch stuff when it needs fetching. Okay, real simple goals. Okay, but I want him to be able to go with me and understand that within those overarching goals, there's lots of kind of smaller goals, little smaller physical skill sets and mental skill sets that he needs to develop. Easy. Hup. And uh, like so one of those things is getting in the boat and so I'm a big stickler about just being able to tell the dog to go get in a truck or go get in a boat or go get on the four-wheeler and them to understand what I want them to do. So I just throw this into my routine and every day hop, 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 uh, I try to get to where getting in the boat it's just uh, it's a little bit smoother and I can do it from a little bit farther away and so like uh, this month 
just right here. If I can just get right here and tell him to get in a boat and I don't have to help him physically, then I'm satisfied with that. Next month, I'll want to be able to do it from over here. The month after, from over here. A couple of months after that, I'll be able to be uh, all the way over there in the kennel and I can tell him to get in a truck or get in a boat or go get on the four-wheeler or whatever and he'll just run and he'll do what he's expected to do, okay? Uh, I know I'm not getting there uh, all in one session. I know I'm not getting there in one month, but every day I'm going to write in my journal, you know, like the results for that training session or that series of training sessions. And all I need to do is stay focused on making incremental progress. So getting him into the boat, that worked pretty well. Now we got to get him out of the boat, good, in a safe manner. And then we'll go right back over here and get right back to our other stuff. So you see how I'm using things that he's mastered, like the small challenges course, right, to keep his confidence weight, to keep his confidence level up, easy, and to make sure that he feels uh, like he can accomplish the goals that I've set forth for him, right? Uh, and I just gradually expand those things. Like how many times have you seen him come over here and sit on this table? So I just add something to this table, which is get up on the four-wheeler. You know, and so he gets up there and he stays up there and that's cool. Let's see if I can get him to sit, sit. Very nice. And look, I mean, this is really the same thing. Getting on the table, right? Pretty simple. That's where we do our vet exams and stuff. And uh, then I just back the four-wheeler up and I put him on the four-wheeler. And then I'll start the four-wheeler and then I'll ride him around a little bit. So let's see. If we oh, and just like that, we've arrived. Do a little scent discrimination work. What do you think, Mr. No Name? Oh, what do you think, Sophie? All right, so we've knocked out our work up at the kennel and we're back here in the back field. And for the most part here, what we're gonna do is some very fun stuff, some scent discrimination exercises. But first, I'm gonna knock out just a little bit of uh, uh, fetch and hold, right? So I'm gonna ask him to take this. Hey, fetch it up. Good boy. And when he holds it, I'm gonna say, hey, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm not gonna do very many of those, just a couple, cause it's kinda early afternoon, it's pretty hot. Fetch it and hold it. Very nice, that's great. Then I'm gonna ask him to do the same thing while I walk. And listen guys, don't, don't get too caught up on this right here. It's a, this is a, a, a exercise that takes weeks and weeks and weeks to really get the hang of. So just focus on making incremental improvement, hoping that the dog gets just a little bit better every day. Lots of sessions, but short repetitions per session, right? So I'm asking him to take it and I'm gonna start walking, let's go. And then if he holds it, then I'm gonna back up. Ask him to sit in front of me, give it to me. I really appreciate that. Oh my gosh, you're such a fine fellow. Start again, we get one more repetition and uh, then we're gonna go to doing some fun stuff. All right, so hold that for me, let's go. Very nice, and I'm gonna come back this way. And he kept hold of it, that's really nice. Appreciate it. Okay, now, not too much of that. Like I said, it's windy. There's lots of stuff out here. It's very fun. And you'll notice always when you go from a low distraction environment to a high distraction environment, some of you, you'll lose some speed and some precision and some reliability. So you got to be really patient and you got to be really persistent and you got to be really consistent and you have to set goals for your training session that are in line with the totality of the environment, not just the, the, what you got in your last training session. Okay, so he's here. He's been pretty good. Oh, now we can do some fun stuff. Now, what I have in my little training vest here, let me get this out, is I have uh, a couple of wings. Show them that there, Eli. Now, you can't tell they're wings right now because like they're in a wool sock. And so this is a scented wing in a wool sock. And I do this because like it's easy to get the dogs to uh, pick up this wool sock and uh, it keeps my wing intact and then each Time that I come out here I just expose more and more of the wing sometimes we put quail in here uh, or other small game birds you know and eventually it's just this but uh, if I just use this all the time especially with young dogs they end up chewed up and we go through too Let's many go over here and hunt it up dude so we're gonna come over here in the high grass okay and then I'm gonna play a simple little game with this young fella I'm gonna have I have two wings and uh, what we're gonna do is kind of play a trade-up game where he brings me a wing back and I throw the other wing for him. And then like as these games progress, then I'm gonna, you know, every time we come out, I'm gonna make the retrieves a little bit tougher. And then sometimes I'm just gonna come out here and hide stuff and, and he's gotta come out and find all these different uh, wings and then bring them to me for me to throw. So we just take the games and we make them real simple at first and then we gradually add layers of com uh, complexity. So first part of the games, I just throw this. 
and then he's going to bring it back. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. As soon as he hands it to me, I'm going to throw one back that way. Just trying to kind of get him used to going across me like this. Oh my gosh, fine animal. And see, it's just a simple trade-up game. He brings me one, I throw one. And you can do it different directions. Just trying to make him understand that uh, bringing that back leads to good things. Oh, you're such a good dog. Very nice. And again, hey, come on. Resist the urge to make these games too complicated. Now, also what you'll notice is sometimes when he picks this up, he kind of shakes it a little bit. Sometimes they'll pick it up and shake it. Uh, sometimes they'll stop to gnaw on it or whatever. Just kind of interrupt that and get them back on track. Very nice. So I get him kind of where he's hunting for these things and he's having a good time. Oh my gosh, what a good dog. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw one over that way that he doesn't see. Right? Come on. And he brings this one back and he's like, hey, Stoney, you know, where's the other one? You're, I thought you were going to throw one for me. And I say, ah, dude, I, I don't know where it is. Let's see if we can find it together. And so I'm like, hey, look over this way and see if you can find it. You know, I just kind of move my body in the direction of where I had thrown that uh, wing earlier. And so this is kind of where we're introducing the concept of like, uh, sometimes we don't see it fall. And when we don't see it fall, like, uh, I'll, I, you know, we're going to work together as a team to find it. So like, uh, I might kind of go push him like this way, go over that way a little bit. Or I might say, hey, go over that way. Or, or hey, go straight back. Or, hey, come to me a little bit. Okay, and that all starts right here with this drill. Like, see, he's over there looking for something. I'm going to throw that sock that way. Hey, come on, buddy. Let's go over this way and see if we can find it. Look over this way somewhere. What do you think? Look, and he uh, finds it. Now I'm going to throw that one over that way. Oh, my gosh, here's a good dog. And I'm going to say, hey, come on, let's kind of go over this way and see if we can find something. Hey, hunt over there. Look over that way. And at first, it's just a few feet, you know, it's not far. Oh my gosh. Go over this way and see what you got. Oh, you're so smart. And then he's kind of be right here in front of me. And I'm saying, hey, look back this way. Look back this way. There you go. Good. And you'll notice I'm not being very specific with my hand motions. I'm not being very specific with my uh, vocal cues. I'm just kind of giving him a general idea that sometimes we're going to come out here to play these games and uh, we're not gonna have perfect information. And when we don't have perfect information, we have to work together as a team. And I'm gonna do my best to make it evident which direction that he needs to go in and how far he needs to go in that given direction, okay? So it's just a simple trade up game is what we started them with. Bring it to me, I'll throw you another one. Bring it to me, I'll throw you another one. And then once they start to get the hang of that part of the drill, just uh, right towards the end of your drill, you just he, throw one and then toss one over to the side that he doesn't see. And just end your sessions with two or three of those. And, you know, before you know it, he starts to really understand. Go over that way or go over that way or go back that way or come to me a little bit. Real simple stuff, real fun stuff. Don't fixate on the specifics of it. Don't fixate on, on the specifics of, of the words that you're saying. Don't, you know, fixate right now on how straight a line he runs. You just, just general ideas. Just over that way, over that way, back that way, okay? And then you can refine that over the course of time. But we work from the general to the specific. Okay, now let's go to the river. On the first part of the journey, I was looking for a place to drink. So I loaded up the boat and I loaded up the truck and I tried to beat the rain. Now I'm down at the river with the dog with no name. <laughs> it feels good to be out on top of my game. Oh, now I have to <laughs> drag my little boat up here on the beach because it has a hole in it. <laughs> Not a big hole, but a hole that's big enough that if we leave it sitting over here for very long, we're going to come back and uh, there's not going to be any riding in the boat home. Uh, okay, all right, so what we're going to do here, obviously we've came down the river to, uh, to work on some retrieving in the water, but while we're down here, we're going to take, take advantage of the fact that this is a very stimulus-rich environment. We have a whole lot of stuff down here. We have sand, we have water, we have silt, 
uh, got rocks everywhere, downs, trees. It's just all kinds of cool stuff. So, you know, when you go out to train, again, don't get hyper fixated on one particular activity and then forget about all the other things that you can knock out in a fun training session. So uh, where we are, there's a state building over here. They don't use it anymore, but uh, it's got a bunch of steps. So we're going to go over here and go up the steps and down the steps, and we're going to walk on some rocks. <laughs> come on. Oh, come on, buddy. Let's go. Dun, 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 now, sometimes, you know, people will tell you things like, oh, don't let your dogs go up and down steps. Well, if you don't let your dogs go up and down steps as a puppy, when are they going to learn? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. How many people that have uh, that give that kind of advice have ever played a sport in their life? But you can't wait until you're an adult to learn a sport. Look at this dog. He goes up and down these steps like a champ. Very nice. Not one bit of problem. Dun, 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 dun. He's a smart dog. Very nice. Oh, so we go up the steps. Oh, and then we'll turn around and we'll go down the steps. Come on, bud. Let's go down these steps. Hope Eli doesn't fall, so we have to go kind of slow. Very nice. So always, guys, try to keep try to keep an eye open because there's lots of things, lots of things that you can work on. Okay, right close to your home. We're not 20 minutes away from my house right now, and look how interesting this is—a big giant set of steps, and then right beside this big giant set of steps, oh, there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff. Come on. So we'll go over here and uh, we'll work on our mountain goat training. Ugh. Very nice. Just come walk along these rocks. And yes, when you get up here and you're doing this kind of stuff, guys, you got to be careful. I mean, uh, you have to, you know, you really have to work on your own balance, and your own proprioception if you're going to do this kind of training. But it's fun and it's good for you. Teach you about body awareness. Very nice. So we're just kind of moving along up here. And what I'm doing here is I'm teaching this dog, you know, how to be cognizant of where his feet go in relation to the environment. You know, I'm definitely not going to try to wait until a dog's a full grown adult and teach him how to walk on rocks that uh, are slippery or rocks that can fall out of place. He needs to learn that at a young age, just like your children need to learn that at a young age. You know, uh, children need to get out, get moving, be interesting. Stop watching the Xbox all the time. You know, when I was a little kid, that's all we did. Come to the river, climb trees, do stuff like that. And that's why I'm still ninja-like agile at 48 years old. Very nice. Oh, you're a smart dog. You're a very good dog. I have a whole series of videos on this called Environmental Socialization. If y'all want to see another dog go through this start to finish, because I know, you know, my dog's pretty good at it already at, at 20 weeks old. Now you'll notice he kind of stopped here and started smelling up in this tree. Well, this old tree here is hollow, right? And so I'm sure there's an animal that lives up in there. He might be up in there right now. So I ain't going to stick my hand up in there too far. But not only are we getting environmental socialization in terms of walking on these rocks and walking through these different types of uh, plants, right? There's also like a scat down here and uh, there's all kinds of scents coming down from this tree. So this guy's getting used to all that. We're going to move our way on down this rock bank. Oh, we're going to be very careful with how we step. Very nice. Oh, that is a very smart dog the way you're stepping there. You're a mountain goat. You're turning into a mountain goat. Oh my gosh. All right, now see, like, look at this. This is a perfect kind of obstacle right here. See, we have rocks coming up to the roots of this tree, lead, uh, leading up to a, a bank that's, uh, it's kind of slippery, but not so slippery that we're probably gonna fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to navigate, uh, navigate as a course up through here. And just like every other activity, what I'm trying to convince the dog is I'm trying to convince the dog that sometimes we're going to be faced with things that are hard, but just because something's hard doesn't mean we can't get it done. I want him to really think about, like when faced with a hard activity, all he's got to do is like, uh, you know, like follow me around and depend on me for leadership because I wouldn't put him in a situation where he's likely to fail. And you see, he made it right up here. Oh, he's such a good dog. He's a very good dog. So we're going to make our way down this bank here. Oh, and then we're going to come out on some more steps. 
Oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, where's Eli? There's Eli, and here we come down these steps like a champ. No problems. Oh, come on, buddy. Now see, so look at all the stuff that we're doing. We could have just come down here and did a little bit of fetching and that would have been a fun session. But for just another couple of minutes of effort, look how I enriched the activity. I enriched the activity just by getting out, getting moving, being interested, exploring the environment, making sure that the dog has a lot of toes to nose stimulation. We're gonna go back up here one time. Come on, let's find us a different path. Good. Now this dog is 20 weeks old, right? So whenever anybody tells you that nonsense about not exercising your 20 week old dogs or not letting them, you know, climb and jump and play and have good time, well, show them this video. And you see how sure-footed my dog is, you know? And another thing, you see how sure-footed I am at 28 years old. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Eli's laughing. I'm not 28 years old, I'm 48 years old. <laughs> so we just keep walking down through here good and again remember what i say about modeling the behavior guys if possible now i know not everybody can get out and walk on these rocks like this but if possible you know get out and do the exploration with your dog not just from your dog's sake i'm not even saying that that's a hundred percent something that like has to be done for the dog i'm just saying it's for you you know if you get out and you have more fun in your training sessions then you're going to do more training sessions, right? So it's the same thing for the dog. The dog needs to see you having fun, and you need to have fun so that, like, uh, you want to keep engaging in the activity. Very nice. Okay, so we'll, we'll let this be our last. We'll let this be our last little small challenge before we get in the water. Look at this. Show them this area, Eli. This is kind of tough, guys. Like, to get up this area of tree roots, like, this dog is going to have to understand how to place all four of its feet okay and uh like you do not want to wait till a dog is a full-grown adult and uh, try to get them to navigate something like this because they don't have the proper proprioception they'll get nervous and they'll end up like sticking their feet down in a hole like this and hurting themselves okay so i'm going to show you how we go ahead and conquer this kind of stuff with young puppies come on mr no name let's get up through here i'm going to lead the way i lead from the front model the behavior very nice gonna come down through here oh my gosh now we're gonna get on some slippery sandy muddy stuff and we're gonna come out hop on these steps very nice oh what a perfect dog then we're gonna come down here and do what we came to do which is a little bit of retrieving so now we're gonna do a little bit of retrieving now one of the things that you'll run into when you first start uh, like throwing and I throwing a fetching item out in the water is the dog doesn't always want to come straight back to you like in this river here there's a little bit of current so even if they want to come back to you they end up down that way you know and that's a problem we run into but also what happens is like you know that dog likes Eli a lot he likes all these kids that come down here to play and so just a lot of times he'll get his he'll get his uh, bumper and he'll kind of go off to the left or go off to the right or get out of the water a little bit earlier than what I'd want him to and so it's cool to get out here in the water with them and throw your uh, fetching item okay buddy. throw your fetching item so that they can go get it but stay close to you but if you really want to work on getting them to come back in a straight line and, and create a habit with that you either have to spend an inordinate amount of time throwing it very short like that good dog or you can kind of you know just do an old-fashioned thing which is to uh, put a long line on him you know so I throw this old long line out there like that hey you don't need to fetch the long line dude and I put it on him. And this way, when I go to uh, throw his uh, dummy out there, I can, I can guarantee that he's gonna come back at least in a relatively straight line. Fetch it up. So see, he gets it. And now if he goes to go over there by Eli or he gets distracted by one of these kids down here, I can just kind of reel him back in in a nice straight line. Good, that way I don't have any conflict with him. Oh my gosh. Very nice. I don't have to fuss at him. All I have to do is reel him in. Oh, very nice. Come on, buddy. Nice straight line. Nice straight line. Very nice. You're a smart guy. Oh my gosh. And we're not, like I said, we're not putting a lot of structure on this. We're just having fun. 
And you'll kind of notice that each time I throw it, I just uh, judge, I, I judge what he's doing, and I ask myself, you know, could I get a little bit of extra distance next time? Now the art of dog training is deciding when to stop, okay? Because what you have to resist is the urge to do things one more time. Like I just, I've just, I just got three good solid retrieves in there. But now look, I had to go through a lot of trouble to get down here. I had to load up the truck, I had to load up the boat, I had to get Eli, I had to get the camera. And so I don't know that like psychologically, I wanna leave with three retrieves. But the decision that I have to make is, are three really, really good solid retrieves better than what might happen next, okay? So four retrieves is better than three, and five good solid retrieves is better than four, okay? But three solid ones followed by one that's not very good, now you've, 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 you've messed up your entire day, okay? So I know this dog pretty well, so I think I can probably get a couple of more, and uh, so I'm gonna get a couple of more, and then we're just gonna call it a session. So I'm gonna throw it a little farther, fetch it up. He's gonna go out there, and I made him swim just a little farther. Now you gotta make sure when you throw it, don't let him out swim your long line. Now we're gonna get in here real nice and straight. Real nice and straight, good boy. Oh, he's a very nice dog. Oh my gosh, he's a very nice dog. Now we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna try to do five. I got three, got a little greedy, got four. Now I'm gonna see if uh, I can't get five. Now if I mess this up, then y'all, <laughs> Y'all can all make fun of me in the comment section. Oh, very nice. Nice straight line, dude. Nice straight line. Nice straight line. Oh, very nice. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, okay, one more. <laughs> now, see, I threw that one way out there. That might be farther than my long line will reach. So I might have to walk out here a little bit. Uh, nope, perfect, perfect. Uh, sometimes greed works out to your advantage. Come on, buddy. Straight line. Come on, come on. Straight line, straight line. Come on, come on. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, all right. Now, we're going to goof off. We're going to run around on the beach a little bit, throw some fun dummies. And the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, uh, how we teach them to get in the boat. All right. All right, now let's talk about getting back in the boat. Uh, now, obviously, you know, since my boat leaks and I'm always dragging it up on the bank, <laughs> I could just let, let him climb in the boat like a normal dog and push off, and it works out perfectly. That's one of the advantages of having a hole in your boat, I guess. But let's say you don't have a hole in your boat and you don't want to risk falling out of your boat by reaching over and grabbing your dog and trying to pull him up. That's where these little things like this come in handy. Let me get my boat situated. The wind's blowing me. All right, this is a fold-out dog step for your boat and it's pretty handy you can put this in a tree and they can sit in a tree like if you're in a marshy environment it's kind of cool but we just fold this out and uh, now when we first start teaching this we teach it right here at the river where it's uh you know where it's where it's very controllable okay this is, can be a little aggravating at first so you know don't wait for your big trip to the lake to introduce this you know go out in a nice safe calm place practice it till you get the hang of it and then gradually work your way into more and more distracting environments more challenging environments all right so what I've done is I folded this out and uh, what this provides is it provides a way for the dog to walk himself into the boat now at first they're gonna need a little bit of help oh again let me situate my my yacht here all right come here dog so as he gets over here, I'm going to kind of probably reach down here, give him a little guidance, get him up on the step, and into the boat. There you go. That's all there is to it. It's so much fun. <laughs> now, when I say that's all there is to it, I mean that's all there is to it when you're in a uh, low distraction environment where you can stand up in the water and hold the boat and control everything. So that's not all there is to it if you're in the middle of the lake. Okay, so master it in some shallow water when you're, when you're in a good mood and, and you're uh, willing to put up with a few mistakes on your part and dog's part. Just trust me, this is not something to put to the test when you're in a hurry. All right, I'll see you guys next week.